Hey guys, Dave Keller here with Market Misbehavior. We're recording this late April 2022, a couple months ago, late January, we did what I call a choose your own adventure exercise. We looked at the S&P and talked about four different potential scenarios had you vote on which one you thought was most likely and why. We're gonna repeat that exercise today. I'll share with you what the S&P has been doing. Talk about the discussion we had in January, what actually played out, which of those four scenarios ended up playing out uh, on the charts, and you can vote on which you think is most likely going forward. So today, it's what do you think is next for the S&P 500? So here at Market Misbehavior, we love to encourage people to think about how they think as investors. I think for uh, equity investors, uh, whether you're a short-term trader or a long-term investor, I would encourage you to think of the markets in terms of probabilities instead of certainties. There's a bravado, there's a, uh, an overconfidence that comes for a lot of, uh, with a lot of investors where they identify the narrative, they identify the path that they think is most likely, and then all other narratives they sort of push away, right? You sort of think, all right, here's what I think is gonna happen and I'm all in on that thesis. What a more, I think, seasoned or well-informed investor would do is think more in terms of probabilities. Here's the most likely scenario, but here's some alternative scenarios and uh, here's what might look like. What's helpful about going through this exercise is then you can think about your own portfolio. How would my current portfolio do in these four different scenarios? What changes would I need to make from the very bullish scenario to the very bearish scenario based on how I'm positioned now versus what mo would most likely happen uh, to cause the markets to evolve in those different ways. So by thinking in terms of different future paths, thinking about what it would mean to uh, different uh, equities, different uh, uh, groups and sectors and themes and styles uh, for your particular holdings, ETFs you might be looking at, what would they most likely do in those different scenarios? And then think about some of the levels, some of the triggers that you would want to pay attention to to make sure you manage risk and uh, and lean into your winners and lean away from uh, the, uh, the securities in your portfolio that are not performing as well. Before we get to the chart, I want to remind you, if you like this sort of thinking about investor decision-making and behavior, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. It'd be great to have you along this ride. Also, give the video a like if you appreciate it. We very much appreciate that back. Don't forget to put a comment below. Which of these four scenarios I'm about to outline do you think is most likely and why? Let's look at the chart. All right, so here we're looking at my daily chart of the S&P 500. When we shot this uh, a previous video in this series, it was end of January. It was sort of after this big first leg down. The S&P had, uh, had uh, established at least a short-term bottom, just above 4,200, and it started to, uh, to bounce up a little bit. We outlined four different scenarios, the very bullish, the mildly bullish, the mildly bearish, and the very bearish. And we talked about what those different scenarios would look like. If you go back to that video, and there's a link before, I'd encourage you to check that out. It's great to review these going back and see what scenarios we talked about and what actually happened in the markets. But the second scenario, the mildly bullish scenario basically played out. What we talked about in that second scenario was how the low was essentially in. We might retest the lows, which we did in February and March. And even though we undercut uh, the low from January uh, quite a bit, right? About 100 points in some cases. Overall, I would consider these additional retests of that first January low. We also talked about how the market would most likely not get much above 4550 because that was a, a key level to pay attention to. If you look, we sort of met that resistance here late, uh, early February a couple of times. Once again, here in late March, we tried to get above 4550, but I would consider that a failed breakout. We came back in, so essentially remained in that range from around 4200 to 4550. So the mildly bullish scenario actually ended up playing out uh, from uh, late January to late April. Let's look at the four scenarios now. So first off, I would say the uh, very bullish scenario. So this would involve the S&P making new all-time highs. And I'm looking at about a three-month uh, lookout here. So think late April, May, June, July. We're looking at sort of mid-summer right now on this, uh, on this outlook. The very bullish scenario would be the S&P getting to new highs, getting well above 4,800, even testing 5,000. What would have to happen for that scenario to play out? Well, the market would have to shrug off the Fed's rising rates, the concerns about inflation, geopolitical issues, military action in uh, Russia, Ukraine, all of that would have to be minimized in terms of its potential impact on stocks. I would argue this earnings season that we're in right now would have to get a little more rosy um, to uh, start to propel stocks uh, upward uh, to, uh, to be able to retest all-time highs. And it's not just the value-oriented stuff that would have to work. Think about what's happening in 2022 so far. 
It's a lot of the cyclical sectors, things like energy and materials and industrial starting to do better. Um, these are the sectors that are outperforming. And even though those charts are actually looking very good, the broad indexes are still relatively flat. If you look, we're not far away from where we were when we shot the video three months ago in late January. We're about the same price level, even though we've had a lot of volatility. So certain stocks have done very, very well. But for the indexes to retest all-time highs and eclipse those, uh, the S&P, the NASDAQ especially, you'd have to have growth stocks start to work a lot more than they have been. 2022 has been about value over growth, broadly speaking. You'd have to see a recovery in the FANG stocks. Only one of those, by the way, Apple, I think, is currently still above its 200-day uh, moving average. You'd have to have more of those start to uh, rally. So scenario one, the very bullish scenario, the S&P makes a new all-time high in the next three months. Is that the one you think is, is uh, most likely? The second scenario I would call the mildly bullish scenario. I would say that that would be sort of a continuation of what we've seen in uh, 2022 so far. Essentially, the second quarter looks a lot like the first quarter. A lot of movement, a lot of volatility. We really don't get below 4,200. We really don't get much above maybe 4,700. I would sort of keep it in this general range. The mildly bullish scenario means we start to make progress and that we're not retesting lows as much. Uh, we're starting to improve overall, but not enough of an acceleration. There's not enough leadership from some of those big growth names that to, uh, would allow the indexes to, uh, to make new all-time highs. So the mildly bullish scenario is sort of a continuation of what we saw here. The low is in, right? We don't get much below 4,200, uh, similar to what we talked about before, but we don't get much above what we've done uh, so far uh, in the uh, in the first quarter, the peak so far uh, after that first sell off in January is around forty six thirty or so for the S and P. So we don't get much above that. I would give it up to forty seven hundred as sort of that mildly bullish scenario. That would include a lot of volatility, certainly a lot of uncertainty. That would be the you know growth prospects of some of those cyclical sectors would be uh, you know sort of um, the counterweight to those would be some of the the struggles that you've seen from Netflix, some of these growth names that are struggling to grow subscribers uh, as we uh, attempt to emerge from this COVID area, era and, uh, and determine what the post-COVID era starts to, uh, starts to look like. So that's scenario two, the mildly, bull uh, mildly bullish scenario. Scenario three is the mildly bearish scenario. That's where the top is now in. We don't eclipse, we definitely don't eclipse uh, the March high. So the S&P remains below 46.25. That would mean that this little bounce that we're seeing off of this Fibonacci support level around 43.80 does not hold. We rotate to new swing lows. We absolutely retest uh, the uh, the low from uh, the first quarter and even undercut that a little bit. I think that mildly bearish scenario would take us even down to 4,000, uh, which would be, uh, you know, again, quite a cut, I mean, quite a haircut. That's a 20% that's a drop from all-time highs in early January, but it's not deep enough to be labeled a bear market, right? It's not at least a 20% drop from all-time highs. So the mildly bearish scenario would be a further deterioration. So what would happen in that scenario? Well, that would mean the market's probably reacting pretty negatively to the Fed rising rates. The prospect of inflationary pressures uh, continues. There's no real alleviation of the, the inflation that we've seen. Commodity prices most likely uh, continue to, uh, to strengthen, uh, including uh, crude oil prices, which puts pressure on consumers. Growth stocks are unable to really uh, propel the markets higher and even continue to struggle. What's interesting about that, when you saw how Netflix obviously gapped well below its lows from uh, so far in the, uh, in the first quarter, but the other FANG stocks would have to struggle as well. Things like Alphabet, Meta platforms would most likely test their all-time or their, their recent lows for 2022 and undercut them. They would most likely break down through support and continue lower. The S&P, the NASDAQ are unable to mount any serious recovery, probably fizzles out not too far above the 200-day moving average, quickly retests the, uh, the, uh, the lows from the first quarter, and most likely undercuts those just by a little bit, at least uh, you know about a 5% drop to, uh, to 4,000 uh, below the low around 4,200. That's the mildly bearish scenario. That leaves us scenario number four, the very bearish scenario. Uh, what I'm have to do for this one is actually back the chart up a couple months so we can bring in the uh, the low from uh, from uh, 2000. Uh, let's see, from 2020. So I'm going to go back a little bit more here. Oh, oh boy, I don't even know my math here. Let's uh, let's do about this. This would be going back to the March 2020 low, and now we put this whole broader context. So if you think about, you know, those first three scenarios, still would be that the market is holding up 
relatively strong from where it's been. That would be at most a 50% retracement of March 2020 to January 2022. The very bearish scenario would mean you'd have to back the chart up to identify some more significant Fibonacci levels going down. I would argue the very bearish scenario gets the S&P back down to 3,200. That would be a pretty broad deterioration. That would be the markets reacting very negatively to the Fed rising rates. That could be uh, escalation in what we've seen with Russia and Ukraine to the point that the ripple effects uh, once again are magnified and there's a lot of uncertainty there. Uh, that would involve gross stocks struggling, but most likely some of the value-oriented areas of the market that have been doing very well most likely get into a corrective mode as well. That would be everything more of a risk-off scenario in this case. You would also most likely start to see at some point, even though the Fed is raising short-term rates, you would start to see uh, the bond markets rally uh, as, as investors go to the defensive side of the coin and go into really defensive stuff like T-bills and treasury bonds, right? That's the way you try to ride out uh, a market uncertainty. You'd most likely see really defensive sectors like utilities and consumer staples at the top of the leaderboard, as opposed to cyclical leadership like energy and materials. Uh, so this would be more of a full defensive rotation. The S&P would be unable to hold support, would most likely fail to hold 3,800, which would be a 61.8% retracement of uh, of September 2020 to um, to um, uh, January 2022 and you may even uh, may even go a, a little bit further there so I have a number of different Fibonacci levels that are laid out in this very bearish scenario and just to alleviate any confusion the two main ones that I look at the September low was a significant consolidation point after the March 2020 low. So if I start a Fibonacci retracement there and go to the high in January 2022, 61.8% of the way is 38.20. That lines up actually very well with a 38.2% retracement of this broader increase from uh, March 2020 low to January 2020 high. That's why that's an interesting level. And these lows from September are also a 61.8% retracement of this entire range as well. So that's my, my very bearish scenario really wouldn't involve the S&P going much lower than 3,200. That, that a fifth scenario would be the, the very incredibly unrealistically bearish scenario, which I think is very, very unlikely. Uh, but that would be that would be a different uh, market environment altogether. So this very bearish scenario puts the S&P down around 3,200. That would be quite a drop. That would be a, a 1,200 point uh, cut from the uh, from the January 2022 high to get down to those lows. So which of those scenarios do you think is most likely and why? And again, to review the four, number one would be the very bullish scenario. The S&P gets above 4,800 and makes new all-time highs. Scenario two, the mildly bullish scenario would be the S&P sort of continuing what we've seen uh, in the first quarter. I would argue the action we've seen overall has been mildly bullish. We haven't, you know, we've, we've pulled back, but have never really followed through much further than that initial drop in, uh, in the first couple months of 2022. The mildly bearish scenario, that third scenario, would be failing to hold 4,200, really not making any reasonable gains beyond what we've seen uh, so far, undercutting the low from April, undercutting the low from uh, from the first quarter and sort of getting down into this 3,800 to 4,000 range. The very bearish scenario gets the S&P below 3,800 and drifts uh, and drifts much further to the uh, to the downside. Down to 3,200, I think, would be the uh, the downside objective on that very bearish scenario. So there you go. The gauntlet is cast. Those are the four options. Which of those four do you think is most likely and why? Let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you like this sort of thinking. It would be great to have you along this ride. We have a lot of great content to share with you in the coming weeks and months. And also give the video a like if you appreciate it. We'd very much appreciate that back. For Market Misbehavior, I'm Dave Keller. Be well, stay safe. Talk to you again soon.